from like street doors are going to be sliding through. Oh, Restaurant is perfect. Thanks, Warden. I was just saying you're in a round day. It's one day. That's just me. Let's go. Good afternoon, my name is Christian and I'll be your story tour guide today as your journey into the Harambe Wildlife Preserve. Now if you guys do look above your head, there is that animal spotting guy. So if you guys do see an animal that I do not, please let me know. We may not see every single one of those animals out there due to sleeping and migration patterns. However, we do tend to have some pretty good luck. Now for everybody's safety, please remain seated for me at all times. Even when the truck is completely stopped, that does mean absolutely no standing. Giving all hands, arms, legs, and feet inside the vehicle. And for the safety and comfort of those around here, it's pretty hot today. We've probably been in the park all day as well. But just make sure to keep those face coverings on at all times, properly covering your mouth and your belly. We're going to be starting off our journey. Okay. Don't some of the more shy and reclusive animals. So over here on the right hand side, there's going to be an old copy right there. Your copy has a reddish brown color on its scope. And black and white stripes on its neck. It's a little hard to see right now because it's kind of hiding between the bushes right there. It's just walking out of them right now. Now with the black and white stripes, a lot of people think that it's related to the zebra. But it is not. It's only living relative. It's a giraffe. And what they have in common with the giraffe is the bone structure inside of their faces. And also a prehensile tongue. That big fancy word just means they have a very long tongue that allows them to grab the leaves off the trees. So their tongue is about 18 inches in length, and it's so long that they can extend it all the way up to their eyes. We're gonna be passing by a wall right over here on the left hand side where a lot of animals like to gather around throughout the day. Don't really see anything in the first yard, but over here on the right, up at the top of the hill, there's going to be a greater kudu. A greater kudu have that tan color to their coat, and they're the largest forest antelope in Africa, reaching about 71 inches at the shoulder. You can also tell the difference between male and female, because males are the only ones to have horns on top of their heads. Um. Um. Coming up on the right hand side, there's going to be some bongos yes. over here as well. Bongos have a ooh, really ooh, pretty color. On the, on the, on the road. They're also the road. the ghosts of the forest. It's so rarely ever seen out in the wild, so it's pretty wow. easy to do. Now, both males and females have horns on their heads that are kind of cooked towards their backs instead of sticking straight up. That allows them to run through the forest by getting on the left. horns cut between it Look. the tree branches or the bushes. Speaking of horns, right here on the left, there's a black rhino up there on the hill. Black rhinos are a solitary animal, so they do tend to stick to themselves. You will never see them in the group of other animals. They really don't like sharing their space. They're extremely territorial animals. When fully grown, they can weigh up to about 3,000 pounds. Another bongo here on the right as well. Now bongo share something that come with the greater kudu and that's the white stripes on their bodies. They use those white stripes as a form of camouflage because they kind of limit the rays of sunlight that shine down from the enemy, which makes it a lot harder for predators to see them during the day, thus making it a lot easier for them to drive away through the forest. We're actually going to be darting out of the forest ourselves and heading into a region of Africa with just a little bit more water. This region we're entering is called the Safi River, and the Safi River is home to some of the more aquatic animals, like hippos and crocodiles. So you to keep your eyes focused on the water, because hippos like to spend a majority of their day under it. And when they're underwater, they can hold their breath for about seven to eight minutes. They come up for air for about three to four seconds, but then go immediately right back down. And here on the left, there's gonna be a group of there in the water. A group of hippos like this is also called a bloat. And they use a variety of vocalizations to communicate with each other. One of them being a we song. A lot of them are up the hippo. More dominant, they're going to be in the group. Hey! Hi, Jumbo! Because they only eat plants, grass, hay, and fruit. So absolutely no meat inside of their diets. Hippos can eat about 80 to 90 pounds of food in just one single day. Those birds on the island right there, the one in the water, those are pinkback pelicans. They get their name from the pink coloration that they get on their backs during the mating season. They also have a really large Look at the hippo in the water. It's about eight to nine feet wide. Wow. Wow. Ooh, hippo. They kind of look like yep. a giant, like, sand crab sort of head. <laughs> Can we have to go with them? Yeah. From here on the left hand side, let's have some Nile crocodiles right there. Oh, wow. Hey, guys. I'm going to cover them in the water. This is one of those areas where a lot of people like to stand up, so just make sure they can see them before they please. They're just like passed out. It's too hot. I don't even want to think. species in Africa, reaching lengths about 18 to 20 feet long. They're also 
so exothermic animals just because they're cold blooded. So by keeping their jaws open throughout the day, they're able to regulate their body temperatures. And with those jaws, they also have a pretty impactful bite. So when it comes to their prey, they're able to crush their bones in just one snap. And they're also able to consume about half of their body weight in just one feeding. Before we head into the next part of the reserve, I'm going to direct your attention here to the right hand side. There's a really big tree. It's called a baobab tree. Also given the nickname the upside down tree. That's because of the top of it, as you guys can see, the branches kind of look like its roots. And I get asked this question pretty often, why there are no leaves on the branches? And that's because these trees are not like any normal trees out here. They remain in place for about eight to nine months out of the year, and they're able to survive very long periods of drought, by spraying water in their trunks. For this reason, they're also given another nickname, and that's called the tree of life. This area we're entering right now is my absolute favorite part of the reserve, and it's a pretty amazing view of the Serengeti grassland, so also known as the savanna. It's very different to the forest we were in earlier, just because this area is a lot more vast and open. As you can see, there's not really that many trees or bushes cut around in the middle where many animals can hide behind. There's also home to some pretty interesting animals and just some of my absolute Why favorites, so like well. antelopes, wildebeest, and drifts. Yeah, and then on the right hand side in the center, there's going to be some white bearded wildebeest. They're the most densely packed animals in Africa. They can travel in herds of up to about 1.5 billion. They're also oh. nicknamed new GNU because of the sound that they make. So just like a cow goes moo, those animals go new. new. Over here on the left hand side, looks like inside of the cave, there's going to be a spotted hyena right there. Right here, just one thing down in there. They have the most vocalizations of any animal in Africa. They can make about 11 different sounds. One of the most common sounds in a character. It's too hot. I don't like the hyenas making the movie The Lion King. Pretty cool back to the hyenas is the females are ranked higher than the males. So even the lowest ranking female in the group is still higher than the highest ranking male. And in order for the males hunt with the females, they actually have to ask the females for permission to join them. We're going to be passing by a couple of termite mounts here on the right and left hand side of us. And termite mounts are consistent of clay, dung, and spit. And they're used by a lot of the animals out here in the savannah as they scratch and post. Once that termite mud reaches about a stump, different animals up here stand on top of it because it gives them a really good advantage. It allows them to overlook the savanna to scout out the area for nearby predators like lions, tigers, or cheetahs during the day or night. Getting another view of the wildebeest over here on the right. So there's a few more of them up ahead over there. Something pretty cool about wildebeest is when they sleep at night, they do like to sleep in rows that were too close together and always facing the same direction. So never facing each other or in opposite directions. <laughs> and the reason why they sleep like that is actually for a pretty intelligent reason. Just in case there's any predators in the area, they're all able to get up and run in the same direction without crashing into one another. over here on the left hand side as well so there's a few of them up there it's actually a baby giraffe right they're walking around in between the trees the babies were born a few months ago they're still pretty young when a giraffe is born they're already about six feet tall and just an hour after they're born they're able to start walking with their mother something really impressive about mom is when she gives birth she does give birth standing up so those babies see about a six foot giraffe when they're born other giraffes here on the reserve, they're all Maasai giraffes. They get their name from the Maasai tribe in Africa. They also have an irregular pattern on their coats and rigid edges on their spots. Reaching heads so that's about 18 to 20 feet tall. If you look over to your right hand side, right there, there's going to be a giraffe right there. Peekaboo! <laughs> they do spend a majority of the day eating. This is going to be one of the adult females. She's the only adult female that does this. She stands right there between the bushes all day. <laughs> And they dedicate 
Okay, about 20 hours out of their day eating and only 30 minutes sleeping. Now 30 minutes isn't all at once. It's increments throughout the day to equal that 30 minutes. So they like to take power naps, very, very short ones. We're passing by some broken down trees right now. Pretty good time we're entering elephant country. Here on the right hand side is one walking around over there. They're the heaviest animals in Africa with males weighing up to about 13 to 14,000 pounds and then females weighing up to about 10 to 11,000 pounds. That's a lot. Hopefully that's not the only one we see out here. There might be a herd of them up ahead. So I'll talk a little bit more about them until we get there. They do have really large ears. African elephant's ears are a lot larger than that of the Asian elephant. And that's exactly how you can tell the difference between an African elephant and an Asian one. It's just about the size of their ears. They also like to pop those ears back and forth throughout the day because it allows blood to circulate through the blood vessels in their bodies and then regulate their body temperatures. They also like to throw blood and water on their back. Some people cool throughout the day. By doing so, it decreases their body temperatures about three or four degrees. They also eat a lot of food. In just one single day, an elephant can consume about 300 pounds of food. Speaking of food, as mentioned, we're going to go to the We're moving forward. We're approaching some red clay pits. And red clay pits are where elephants like to get nutrients and their minerals. Guys are going to see a perfect example of how these animals get those items. Coming up on the right hand side of us, there's going to be some markings on this red clay. And these markings are elephant tusk marks. Elephants scrape their tusks across that red clay so they get all of those nutrients and those minerals that they can't really get from the normal diets. Sadly, the biggest threat to these animals are humans. That's because humans are hunting them for their tusks, which is made out of ivory, which is also what piano keys are made out of. And just like adult human teeth, once those tusks fall out, they don't really grow back. That's why it's super important to protect these animals. Because just like we need our teeth to eat, elephants eat those tusks to use as tools to get all of those nutrients and those minerals. Another favorite problem for facing in Africa is habitat loss when it gets to coltan. Coltan is the same substance that's found in your technology, such as your cell phones, cameras, tablets, and laptops. So a really good way to help out these animals at home is by recycling any of that whole technology that you don't release anymore. So as you guys notice back there, elephants are pretty large animals, so they really do need a lot of space. Just a really single sort of elephants over here, they might be in for the rest of the night. They're probably going to be sleeping in the back. So, but it's not a lot of large animals for a while now. There's a few smaller ones that we're approaching over here. Well, on this island, there's going to be a group of greater flamingos. And you'll never see a flamingo by itself. It's always in a group like this, and a group of them is called a flamboyance. Something pretty cool about these animals is when they're born, they're not born pink. Their natural born colors are gray. But their diets consist of brine shrimp, which are high in beta carotene. And that beta carotene is an enzyme that gives them that pink coloration on their feathers. There's still a few flamingos on the island that are still gray, but they're starting to get the pink colors, some of their legs, their feathers, and their beaks. They do remain gray for about a year after they're born, and then fully become pink after about two years. Look at that one. They're, so they're also codependent animals, so they're pretty good at co-parenting. Unlike elephants and giraffes that are maternal animals, which means only the females take care of the baby, flamingos are paternal. When that female has an egg, she passes the egg between herself and the male, so that way both male and female can take turns to give her the egg throughout the day. transition into the second part of this event, you're going to see it's a little bit more densely packed with trees and bushes. It's also going to be home to some of the bigger cats of Africa, like cheetahs and lions, but those big cats are going to be a little bit further up ahead, so I'll talk about them in just a little bit. Yeah, on the left hand side, there's a couple of scimitar horned oryxes. They're really pretty animals, actually pretty cool. They're where the myth and the legend of the unicorn started, and the reason being is because they have two horns on their heads, but their horns are symmetrical to each other. So when farmers in Africa were looking at this animal from one side in the forest, it almost looked like it had one horn on top of its head. They can also go about eight to nine months without drinking water, and that's because they get the moisture from the food that they eat. So then they only sweat once their body temperatures reach about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to be passing by cheetah territory right now here on the left hand side. And listen, there's one on the far left hand side laying down away from oh, the tree. Wow. 
There are the fastest mammals in Africa, typically reaching speeds of about 60 miles per hour. Now the reason why I say typically is because if they try hard enough, they can push that speed to reach up to about 70, 75 miles per hour. They can go from 0 to 60 in just about 3 seconds. And even though they are the fastest mammals in Africa, they can't really hold their speed for very long. They do get tired very fast, so they can only hold it for about 30 seconds to a minute. However, they do like to use their tails as a sort of rudder, which allows them to change direction once they start running. I'm not really finished talking about large cats just yet, because as we're coming around the bend, we're going to some Kobe rock formations, where a lot of larger predators like lions like to use as an advantage point. Before we continue on, right here on the left hand side, there's a bont box sitting down there. Bont box are related to the white printed wildebeest that we saw earlier. They are kind of like distant cousins, but you can only see them on reserves like this one today just because they are extinct in the wild. At one point, there's only about 17 of them left in the world, but through conservation efforts, now there's over about 3,500 of them across the globe today. I haven't really seen any lions over here. They are pretty inactive animals during the day. They do sleep for about 18 to 20 hours of their day, and then they're only going to be active for about 4 hours, and that'll be a night time for their food. sleeping in those burrows back there. They like to back into them with their faces sticking out. So just in case there's any predators in the area, they're able to defend themselves. If you look over here to your right, there's going to be a couple of water bucks over there. Let's say there's about two or three of them. They kind of look like deers. They do get their name from the large amount of water that they drink. If there is a water buck nearby, you also know there's a source of water nearby as well. Trouble, I see you. Over here on the right hand side, there's some eggs there on the ground. Those eggs are ostrich eggs. Ostriches have the largest eggs of any animal in Africa. Each individual egg weighs about three pounds each, so the equivalent of two dozen chicken eggs. Something really impressive about those eggs is they're going to be so strong that if a man were to stand on them, they would not be able to break. They do have an extremely hard outer shell to them, and they can withstand up to about 300 pounds on top of them before they even start to crack. It takes about 46 to 49 days for the fertilized ostrich eggs to hatch. We're just about to enter the final area on the reserve. It's the newest addition here, and it's called the Nagani Glen. It was built by farmers in Kenya, and it's where the warden lives. And it's also where the warden takes care of some of the smaller animals here on the reserve. And listen, they're still out right here, right in front of his house. We're approaching a group of Nigerian dwarf goats. They can only go up to be up to about two feet tall. A lot of the villagers rely on the goats for nutrients such as milk, uh -huh. and the farmers, they also use them as lawn to like that, that when they're ready to go in at night. So they don't really need machines to mow the grass, really. that's because the goats do all the work for them. They will literally eat anything and everything that's sprouting from the ground, so that way the larger hoofstock animals are able to roam the area freely without getting their hooves caught between any of the weeds. So passing by his house right now, that doesn't mean that we're almost back to the village, but if these are pretty cool animals out there, I'll be some of your favorites. A really great way to help out these animals at home is by learning more about conservation efforts. And one of those efforts is going to be as simple as recycling. You can recycle any paper, plastic, or old technology that you don't really use at home anymore. It's how the animals like the African elephants, the rhinos, the lions, the giraffes, or any of the other animals here on the reserve. And if you do want to see some more animals that are not here on the reserve, but they are here in Africa near the Rome Bay, there's Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, and that's right next door to us. It's a self-guided walking tour. Typically, it takes people about 15 to 20 minutes to walk through. 
They have animals like gorillas, zebras, meerkats, they get mole rats, the burning aviary. They actually just this renovated the burning aviary a couple of weeks ago and it looks really nice. There's also a baby gorilla over there. Her name is Grace. She's three years old. She's still pretty small. She's still super hyper. There's also some colobus monkeys as well. Colobus monkeys are black and white small monkeys but with really long tails. There's a whole family there. There's a grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, and with the baby Douglas was born two years ago. So you're more than welcome to check it out right now. I actually do recommend checking it out right now just because it is open today until 6.45. So you can basically just have about 45 more minutes to check it out now.
mean, we don't like to say goodbye. The sponsor side is the way to show the final. So instead, we like to say quadrini, which means to go well. So quadrini, guys, go well. Go wild. And if you're not going to win your adventure, you can take your day. Yeah, this thing is kind of working. Watch your hands on my feet. I'm the right.